Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drumkin's Independent Media Production. We are back with another kind of style specific thing, but it's actually more of an era specific thing. We talked about vintage drum sounds. We're going to talk about modern drum sounds today. Now, just like vintage drum sounds is kind of a nebulous, cloudy thing, modern drum sounds also wildly nebulous, means different things to different people. But kind of like we did last time, we're going to talk about what I think of as like a middle of the road modern idea in terms of the choices that we're making here. You can always play whatever you want on the gear that you have. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But getting away from what we did last time, we're going to kind of swing in the opposite direction of the pendulum here. We're going to start with the ground up with the kick. Now, for saying that vintage is boomy and dark and kind of reminiscent of maybe jazz records or Zeppelin records, things like that, then the first thing we have to do is we have to port the front head because we've got to get a mic in the hole a little bit, make sure that we're getting the attack of the batter for this more modern sound. There were plenty of vintage players that were just taking the front head off of the drum. Lots of people were cutting holes in it too. You know, this again, super nebulous, but just for a benchmark, we're going with ported front head, pillow inside, and we're using modern style drum heads, which is to say the front has a little bit of a muffle ring around the edge, and the batter, EMAD, has a self-muffling system on there to take some of the overtones out. Additionally, we're putting a small but significant pillow in there that is gonna get us basically a super punchy sound. In terms of tuning, we're doing basically finger tight. They're not even really tuned. They're just tensioned up enough that the screws aren't backing out. I literally didn't put a key on the batter side at all. This is the drum in the kit that really puts us in a position of needing to repeat that we're not EQing or compressing anything. This is just the drum by itself. Um, I say that because we were shocked at the recorded sound with no EQ or compression of any kind. All right, number two, we are talking about the toms. Modern to me, generally speaking, says articulation, clarity, punch, clarity, attack, clarity. So we're doing clear G2s on the top, two ply, clear G1s on the bottom, no muffling, clear, clear, clear. We're not worried about talking about warmth or vintageness or anything other than we just want to hear these things and we want to hear what we're playing on them, whether it's a quiet dynamic or a super loud dynamic. And lastly, the snare drum. We dug out this Tama, which is already a pretty aggressive drum. It's got some bubinga in there, got die cast hoops, pretty aggressive. We went ahead and put an HD dry on here, which is a thick kind of live head with some muffling around the edge. Coated, you know, but this is a head for hitting hard. This is a head for articulation, especially at higher tunings. It's a head that can take a beating um, and actually responds to me, better kind of in higher tunings. Um, it does low pretty good too, but it really screams when you kind of raise it up there. All right, let's hear the full kit as is with these modifications after we got out of vintage land.
Now tuning wise, the bass drum again, basically finger tight, just tight enough that the screws aren't backing out. Obviously, no sustain of any kind. It's punchy, it's fat, it's a short sound. Um, it is super aggressive. It's weirdly not super loud where I'm sitting because it's not resonating at all, but out front, it sounds enormous. So great live sound, great mic sound. Um, great for fast patterns, great for burying the beater. I did a lot of that today. I was actually pushing <laughs> pushing it away from me. I was hitting it so hard. And it basically sounds the same whether you bury the beater or not when it's set up this way. For the toms, on the low side for the batters, not super low, I can still get bounce off of them. They feel good to play. They're giving me back some tone. And the bottom heads are marginally higher than the top, somewhere between a whole step and a third. Not crazy, not a lot of pitch bend, but nice sustain that kind of arrives a little bit after the attack. You get that initial slap and then a little bit of warmth after that. Now these are unmuffled. We're basically in the ballpark of this kind of sound. Um, a lot of times you'll see tape or some degree of muffling, maybe a marginally self-muffling head on the batter side for these. I wanted to go wide open so you could hear it like this because it's way easier to subtract things from the sound than it is to somehow add them. Um, with EQ and things later. But suffice to say, if this is too wild, you can put a little bit of tape on there and it's really gonna focus in the tone, um, especially in studio situations. But these are super fun as is, and this is the loudest iteration of them also. When you start to add things, it's gonna bring the threshold down a little bit, and it's also gonna probably muddy the attack a little. Now the HD Dry, um, not a head I use a whole lot. Um, I have one on my baritone snare, and it's actually for low, for like super low tuning. This is kind of like a pre-muffled, pre-EQ'd, like snare sound in a box kind of thing. It's two ply, it has vents around the edge, and it also has a muffling ring on the underside around the edge. This is a head that basically, at a given tension, it's giving you a pre-muffled sound. Um, depending on where you put it, tension-wise, it can get a little choky, it can get a little tricky to tune because that's a lot of mass you're dealing with and a lot of layers that are interacting to try to make the one sound. Uh, but that said, if you're dealing with a situation where you're really hitting, and especially if you want to get up kind of in the stratosphere with the tuning, um, and you want the thing to last longer than one show, frankly, that's what this is for. I think of it again as a live head more than a studio head unless you're going for like an effect like with the baritone snare. With this drum, it actually reacts really well. We generally have one on this drum because it's an aggressive drum. It is very bright, it's very loud. It has the die cast hoops on there. These are heavy die casts too. I'm not sure what they're made of, but they're heavier than the ones that I'm used to just physically. So you're dealing with a lot of brightness, a lot of high end and a lot of just aggressive attack. So a head like this isn't taking too much away. It's still speaking, it's open. Um, and it's fun to hit, like the harder you hit it, the better it sounds. <laughs> now on the other side of it, um, it is important to remember that even if you're gonna do quasi-modern sounds or things like this, um, you're gonna want it to have a dynamic range that you can use. When you set your bass drum up in this manner, the lower volumes and the higher volumes don't sound significantly different. Like if you're using a wide open drum with minimal muffling, lower dynamics have a really dramatically different character than really powerful dynamics. There is still a difference here, but it's, it's narrower. The toms being wide open like this, they still have a very big dynamic character, but if we were to put muffling or tape or something all over them, we would also diminish that. We would have sort of a range where they were less useful and speaking a little bit less. With the snare drum, if I crank it too far, the quiet stuff is all gonna sound really pingy and really small. And likewise, if I tune it too low, hitting it extremely hard might choke it out. So staying in a range where the quiet stuff sounds good and also the loud stuff sounds good, super important. I'm gonna play it a little bit lighter so you can hear what that's gonna sound like. Now I'm sure that some of you are screaming, that's not my idea of a modern sound or you're imagining a different band than I'm imagining or something like that. I'm actually not imagining one in particular. I'm thinking about more of like a Swiss Army Knife sound that I would set up if I was in a situation where they told me ahead of time that they wanted it to sound modern and poppy. Whatever works for you in your situation is what works in your situation. Um, I don't get called to use this sort of sound very much. Uh, the last time was definitely like a theater production kind of thing where there was a specific kind of aesthetic that we were recreating. It wasn't about being creative or expressing myself in terms of my sounds so much. However, there's lots of bands and lots of situations where this type of thing would work um, and lots of them where it would work better than the quasi vintage sounds that we were doing the other day. This is really about showing you also the breadth of a single kit where 
maybe you think of this as a modern kit based on the appointments and the edges and the hoops and all that stuff. Or maybe you think of it as somewhere in the middle. It's definitely not a vintage kit, but it felt to me like it got those kinds of sounds as far as what I was imagining. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you hear about our new episodes. We are still doing the tutorials every Tuesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, along with a lot of other content on the Patreon, particularly in the symbol realm. I'm super excited about that. I'm really amped to get that off the ground and, and taken off. There's a link below if you haven't been to the Patreon. Please click on that, check it out, see if you can help out, keep us going here in these uncertain and bizarro times. And if you have any thoughts about this. Um, I want to hear about that in the comments. A thought that I had was the idea of, you know, we took a modern kit and made it vintage last week. Is anybody out there using vintage gear that they're using to get kind of a modern sound? I mean, it makes sense to put clear G2s on a kit like this, but you know, whatever your experience is with trying to be as modern or as, you know, ahead of the curve as possible, I want to hear about it. Let us know. Let us know.